and Megan here so um, I just wanted to do a video on um, a canvas thing for a few reasons um, but number one this is a live stream but I did not allow a chat um, because I'm using it for the purpose of recording video only um, <clears throat> number two I called it TBA because I don't know what to call this yet <laughs> um, because I don't know where it's gonna lead to so I've been thinking about this Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle diamond painting that I unboxed recently um, that came with a lot of creases in it. Um, I wasn't sure how to go about it. I've been having it under um, the rest of my diamond painting um, storage canvases um, down there, sorry, excuse the mess, underneath my big old heavy elephant diamond painting that I just did. Um, and I picked it up today and this is what it looks like. Not very different. Um, again, that wasn't much weight though. So, um, so I've been thinking a lot about this stupid canvas. And so of course I go to YouTube because YouTube is our savior, which is why I started these videos in the first place. And I watched a few different videos on um, what to do with a creased canvas. Now, while watching these videos, I have learned some things and um, it's kind of like common sense type things mixed with some physics lessons. So um, I thought I would tell you what my thought process is on this subject a little bit. So when your canvas is manufactured in the factory, the glue, the sheet of glue that goes on to your drill field is um, adhered when the canvas is flat, correct? So then they go and they box it up and they have to bend it, either roll it in some fashion or, you know, do the whole like fold bend thing and um, that causes your flat glue I'm using my finger just as a as a um, an example and actually I'm gonna use a piece of tape so say my finger is the canvas the material and this piece of tape is the glue on top of the canvas okay so I got my glue on my canvas and then I go to package it and I have to hold it because it'll just rip right off I go to package it and it bends, all right? I'm bending that glue. Well, in order to allow for a bend to happen, the glue has to stretch, okay? So to account for that extra surface area that's, you know, that's happening right there around that corner. So you get your diamond painting, you unbox it, you try to, you know, pick up the cover paper, put it back to get it to not roll up on you anymore. But then you're left sometimes with these creases, depending on the shipping method and the packing method that the seller used. Um, now, disclaimer, if you get a lot of canvases that are really badly creased, you need to find different sellers. Because I, this is like, I think I've only gotten two that have been really bad. Um, where to the point where I don't even know if I can do it because the drills won't lay flat. Um, so this, this, I don't feel like this happens too often. And if it does, then you need to figure out a different seller. So anyway, you go to, you know, you do the cover paper thing. You've all learned that by now, I hope. If not, um, watch more videos on it. <laughs> um, but then you're left with these creases. Now, a lot of people think, okay, I'm gonna iron it, right? <clears throat> and that's how, you know, it's just, it's just bad. The bottom here is just really wrinkled. Um, and if it was just around the edges, I wouldn't worry about it, but it's, it does go on to the glue and I'm a little worried. Um, by the way, this is a 40 by 50 centimeter painting. Um, okay, so you got your, you got your, can you got your canvas glue on your, you know, on your canvas. 
when you go to flatten that out again, it, it's going to have extra glue excess on top of your canvas. So if you iron this and really flatten out this canvas fabric, when you flip it over, you're going to see many more creases in your glue because the glue, the creases, the, the stretchiness of the glue is showing because it doesn't have creases to hide it anymore. So you're, you're gonna find these wrinkles of glue in your, on top of your canvas, even though the fabric is flat, okay? So because it's excess, if you try to push it, push it, push it, it's probably not gonna do anything. I mean, you can try it, but it's probably not gonna do anything because it's still just extra, it's still just extra um, glue. So, um, and I have to plug in my phone, so that's a bummer. Um, anyway, whoa, don't go falling down on me now. Okay, so um, here's my thoughts, okay? If you want to iron, you know, maybe ironing isn't the right way to go. If you have, you know, some minor, um wrinkles or whatever, I would suggest placing it under heavy books or your mattress or something heavy so that time is on your side so that you can flatten the canvas out and hopefully the glue has enough elasticity that it will shrink back into its flattened form how it was when it first laid on your canvas. I don't think that will work with severe wrinkles, but um, it would probably work on, you know, not so severe wrinkles. And I wanna show you this again. I just took the tape off my finger and I just kind of placed it lightly on my hand. And as you can see, it makes sense that the wrinkle would happen when that, when that glue is bent, okay? So simply ironing it, won't help the glue. Um, so I have a couple different ideas. Number one, like I said, put it under heavy stuff. Hopefully in a week or two, <clears throat> it'll be flat enough so that the glue doesn't wrinkle up on you because that's what affects the drills and the end look of the drills. That's what affects it, okay? The other thing I was thinking we could do, and I've never done this before, but I was, <laughs> I guess I'll try it. Um, is after you iron it and then after you you know roll it i got this little baby rolling thing this roller because my rolling pin is so freaking big that i needed to just do a smaller area at once so i bought this a little while back i'm going to attempt to iron the canvas roll the heck out of that section pull the paper back assess the damage and then i was thinking because there's excess glue you could either cut it and then lay it back flat down or you could try to cut the glue off of the canvas and lay it back down or you might just have to tear the glue up a little bit and um, you know when you go to do that section put that you know your drills on that section of glue you might just have to um, put some like clear nail polish or crazy glue or some sort of glue to adhere your drills back down to your canvas. So I'm gonna go get my X-Acto knife that I forgot and um, hang on a second, I just have to go run and grab it.
Okay, here I am. All right, so we're gonna attempt to do this. Um, I've got some strong needle nose tweeter, tweezers. I've got some flat nose tweezers, an X-Acto knife, and my roller. So we're gonna try this. So I put down like a little towel just to protect my table because I don't have an ironing board. Again, I don't iron. Um, put this towel down. I'm gonna do this bottom section right here because this seems to be the worst here. So I'm gonna focus on this area. I'm gonna put a towel. This is a pretty thin towel, so I think I'm gonna double it for now. I'm gonna put the towel on top of that. I've turned my canvas over so the glue is facing down. And then I've got this really cool retro iron because I don't have an iron. So this is my parents' iron from like the freaking 70s or something, I don't even know. Um, I hope it works. It's hot. Um, I've put it onto like between the cotton and wool setting. So I put it like a little bit closer to the five, but like in the four, because um, both of the videos I saw um, said to use the wool setting, nothing um, lower than the wool setting or else nothing's gonna happen. Two different videos told me that, so that's what I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna flip it over quickly. And if you go flying, I'm sorry, hope don't. Um, and then I'm gonna try to roll the heck out of it, assess the damage, and we'll go from there, okay? So here we go. I don't iron ever. So, I mean, I don't think a lot of us millennials, if you wanna call us that. All right, that's warm. Let's try this because I've been worried about this canvas for so long because I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with this stinking thing. I mean, I'm, I've contacted the seller and they're sending me a free different diamond painting of the same one or the same size, but I wanted this one, you know, so uh, all right. So I just ironed. It's warm to the touch. It's not super 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 hot but i'm gonna roll the crap out of it i'm just gonna take out this towel i'm pushing down pretty hard Whoop, see i don't want you going anywhere we'll see what happens it, it's looking better um you can kind of see the comparison between the two sides here and the shadows from my light. So this is definitely looking better. I'm gonna flip it over and see what the glue looks like now. It already has tons of creases on it. Um, okay, so that, okay, that seemed to do the trick over here actually, which is surprising. Um, really surprising to me actually because I didn't expect it to work that well let me try let me look at and see what the glue looks like before I do anything so that's what the glue looks like before I do anything to it if you can see this tell by the shadows and stuff let's try it on this side and see if it's the same has the same whoop, don't go anywhere see here flip it put this down and this was like a 20 something dollar painting but if I can't get some of these wrinkles out there's no sense in even doing it because I laid drills over glue wrinkles even less than this and they turned out like crap so either way I'm getting another painting either way you know and I already have a Hogwarts castle but I like this one better <laughs> but we'll have to see what happens all right so I'm just concentrating all my heat right in this one area I'm pushing down 
um, moderately hard. Not, you know, with all my body weight or anything like that. But, all right, I'm going to pick it up. I just wanted to do that until it cooled because I didn't want any glue like squishing out onto my table. If that happened, I don't know. Now I'm doing this step just to see if I can press the glue back down into onto the canvas so it's flat again. All right, let's check it out. So that looks a lot better on this side. It looks a lot better than it did before. Um, nope, don't go anywhere. Let's check it out. Okay. That is, I mean, the different creases that you see, like right here, aren't as deep as they look on camera. Um, they're not, it's just like a slight bend in the actual canvas itself, but it looks like that really, really helped with those creases. Now, unfortunately, this whole canvas is a huge pile of dung because it's just, I need to move this crap. My table's full of crap. Um, cause if you can see just by the light hitting it, I don't know if you can. Um, but it's got glue wrinkles in it. Do you see up where it's shining on it right there? I mean, it's got wrinkles all over. So let me try this. I'm going to go on this section right here and see if that same strategy will work. So it's by my thumb. Put the towel down. If this didn't work, I was going to, so it's like right here. Um, I was going to try to cut the glue away from the canvas and then lay it back down or pick it off completely so it will lay down flat. And then I would um, have to you know, put clear nail polish on it or crazy glue or somehow glue the beads, the drills back down eventually. So let's see, and this is all live. I'm not editing anything. So <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does work, great. If you fall over, you fall over. If I swear, I swear. So viewer discretion advised. But in some of the ironing videos that I saw, they said it's more creased after I ironed it and I, and I thought about it and I was like, well, yeah, hello. That makes sense because the glue, ha there's excess glue now, you know? I mean, shoot. I mean, you don't want to lay it. You don't want to lay your drills on those creases without doing anything on with them. And the weight of the drills, hopefully, will do something you know to flatten it out once you lay them down on the canvas but okay so i did this section right here let's see if it made a difference in the creases I feel some creases still happening. Um, the section I did was right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's definitely more flat. Like this one right here is pretty bad. Right there right where the light hits it. Do you see, uh, right there. Um, but that might've worked actually. I don't know, I, it's hard to tell. 
I'm gonna take my X-Acto. I'm gonna do some little cuts in the glue here and then roll the heck out of it. It's even squeaking. <laughs> See if that helped at all. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I'll know for sure until I lay these drills down. Because you can tell when you lay it down on some glue that's not flat, you know. You can definitely tell. There's definitely a difference in elevation. This one goes like all the way up there. I'm just gonna try this. I didn't iron this part, but I'm just gonna try this strategy. Oops. Let's see if that works at all. I mean that might be enough it might be enough to do the trick but I don't know so yeah I don't know. so I guess what you can I mean it, it also I can't there I can't just say hey if you have a crease canvas this is what you should do every time because it depends on the severity of the creases you know if you have huge wrinkles of glue then you need to pick that stuff and cut it off and you know you need to lay that glue flat but if it's little ones like right here I mean I'm glad I got these wrinkles out that is amazing and the key to that is in the roller I believe you need to roll the heck out of it to flatten that out once it's ironed because the ironing only takes care of the canvas it doesn't take care of the glue um, so, yeah, I can't say that this would work on every single painting, but I think it's worked good enough for this one. So I'm happy about that because that means I can do this one and be happy with it. So... That's great. The other thing I wanted to try out with you guys today is someone told me um, in terms of cutting this cover paper that you can just use an X-Acto knife. And I was like, oh, that seems easy enough. I mean, like, that, how easy would that be? You wouldn't have to, you know, worry about that very much. Um, but there's a couple problems with that. A, I like to use a light pad underneath it because... Um, I can see between the drills, between the grids, and that's why I use a light pad underneath it because um, I don't like to just cut arbitrarily. I need to, I like to see, I like to cut on the line as best I can so that when I fold back a section, I don't have to cut the paper or go underneath the next section to do it, to do that last row, I can just do it. Um, so I don't have my light pad with me. I guess I could go get it if you guys are okay with that. Um, so I can try this out. I'm going to put this iron away for now because I don't want to burn myself. Hang on, I'm going to go get my light pad. Okay, so now I'm choosing to use my old light pad because it's pretty much worn out. The plug's worn out.
just needed a ruler. All right, so I got my ruler. I got my light pad. I just need to plug it in. Turn it on. All right, so I'm going to try this. Um, but I'm actually going to put you like this so I don't knock you over. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. I'm going to go on a, a line here as best I can. I mean, this probably isn't going to be the most perfect line I've ever made because I'm only doing this for the very first time. And we'll try to cut this cover paper without cutting the canvas. Or the ruler. All right, let's assess the damage. All right, that is freaking cool. I didn't cut through the canvas. We're good on that, but I cut a very straight line right where I wanted to. That's great. So thank you for whoever suggested that because it's like doy. But I was really worried when I first heard, read that comment because I was like, well, if I cut the freaking canvas, I'm screwed, you know? So you just got to do it with enough pressure so that you, um, you're not cutting the canvas, just the paper. So let's do that more. Do it along. These symbols are so dark, it's hard to tell. Okay. Where do I leave off? Right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it some more. I don't know how straight that is, but we'll see. Gentle. Gentle. There. Yeah, see, I went, I went up a row. Whoops, that's okay. I'll fix that um, as I go. Wow, that's nice. That's really nice. So if you feel confident with an X-Acto knife, um, or if you have a not, you know, a canvas that you don't really care about too much, like say that you got one and it's not what you wanted, or if it was really cheap. Um, the only problem now is that I can't get it back down <laughs> to fit where I, where I had it. That's weird. I can usually do that pretty well. Um, you can try it out on a canvas that you didn't pay much for or, you know, just to see if you can, if you can do this like I'm doing it. But I need to use the light pad or else I can't, because I have to see between the lines. If you don't care about the lines and you just want the can the cover paper cut into equal sections or manageable sections and it's not already cut that way, then you know, you can just use scissors and cut across it or just use the exacto knife freehand. But I'm weird and I I need to have my my um, cover paper not covering the, the section that I'm trying to work on. You know, the last row, that tricky row that, you know, is adjacent to these two sections or this section and that section. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that seems to work great. So, I think I'll keep going with this. I don't want to bore you guys with the whole thing, but it seems like it's pretty good. And you can feel when you're using the X-Acto knife, you can feel the tearing of the paper. You know, you can feel it cutting. Um, and you kind of know that you're using enough pressure because you can hear the paper, feel and hear the paper cutting. So yeah, anyway, so that is my two cents on a wrinkled canvas. Um, I sort of figured it out of why it happens why ironing it brings out more of the wrinkles. Um, 
if you want one of these guys, I can put the link on Amazon. I mean, on under the under this video, um, it's from Amazon. Um, it's just a nice little small section roller that you just press. You know, you press down with your hands or whatever. It's I mean, it's cool. Um, so you don't have to get this whole huge rolling pin out every time you want to roll and stick your drills back down. So, yeah, anyway, guys, I'm going to do another video soon tonight. Um, I'm going to unbox something. And then, yeah, I'll show you guys some cool stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.